Hi, I'm Charles Stella. I'm a composer, producer, and engineer in Los Angeles. Welcome to my studio. I'm really excited today to share a new plugin with you from Plugin Alliance called the Elysia Character. It's based on the hardware unit of the same name. It's one of my favorite processors that I use every day in my studio for mixing and mastering as well as using on individual instruments. It's a stereo mastering grade processor with three distinct modes, mid-side operation, and a simple, easy to use user interface. So now I have this incredible processor as a plugin that I can use inside my DAW on multiple instruments, buses, and in mastering. I'm a big analog guy. I love analog processors, analog synthesizers. So for a plugin to really nail the character and sound of one of my favorite processors is a huge deal to me. I put together a demo to show you some examples. So let's get started. Okay, let me introduce you to the character Discrete Class A Stereo Saturator. I've composed a track in Studio One and I have four stems, a drum stem, bass stem, DI'd guitar stem, and a keyboard stem. Then I have five instances of the character plugin, three mix versions, and two mastering versions. And I'll go over the differences between the two a little later. Okay, so let's start with the controls on the mix version. The first is the bypass control. Then the next two buttons engage the saturation mode. With both buttons out, you're in soft saturation mode, which is the gentlest of the three modes, and features symmetrical clipping with predominantly odd harmonics. Then we have the drive control, which sets the input to the circuit. The color control, which is a filter of sorts. When you're at 12 o'clock, it's flat. And as you move counterclockwise, you're accentuating more bass frequencies. And as you move clockwise, you're accentuating more treble frequencies. And here's the gain setting, which can be a boost or a cut. And I find that it corresponds with the drive setting in soft saturation mode, so that whatever you're boosting, you're usually making up the same amount to get back to unity gain. And then there's the mix control, which allows you to do parallel processing. So, what does it sound like? Well, let's check it out on my drum bus. Bypassed. In. So that's a pretty subtle use of the plugin. We're shaving off some peaks, we're making it fatter, we're bringing up our RMS level. It's basically acting like a Vibe compressor. So that's soft saturation mode. Let's check out what it can do on bass. I have my bass synth stem here. It's a mini Moog, and I'm using another instance of the mix version of the plugin. But this time, I'm going to use the FET Shred mode. Now the FET Shred mode changes the operating level of the circuit and starts to introduce asymmetrical clipping and more even harmonics. And it's really reminiscent of an overdriven tube guitar amplifier. So let's check that out. Bypass. Back in. So that's still on the subtler side of things, but the FET shred mode is introducing some nice upper end harmonic distortion. It's bringing the signal a little more forward, making it more interesting and exciting while still maintaining the integrity of the signal. 
So the drive control is a little under four, the color control is about 11, gain is a little over one, and the mix is still 100% wet. So let's move on to our guitar stem. I'm gonna use another instance of the mix version, but this time I'm gonna use turbo mode. Now turbo mode is gonna push the circuit even harder. It's the most extreme mode of the processor, and it also handles higher input levels and much higher drive levels. So we've heard the soft saturation mode and the FET shred mode. And now with the turbo mode, I'm gonna use a DI'd guitar that's really clean and put it through the most extreme mode of the processor to get some really cool distortion. Starting bypassed. Okay, cool. So now we're starting to get some nice fuzz tones going. The drive control is kicked up pretty high. The color control is at three, accentuating much more of the high frequencies. I've got a reasonable amount of gain makeup going on. And we are also still 100% wet. Another cool feature of the plugin that's different than the hardware is that on the hardware, you have to press FET and then press turbo in order to get the turbo mode. Whereas on the plugin, if you want to go to turbo, just hit turbo. So that saves you a few steps. And now with turbo mode, this thing is really starting to sing. Okay, so now we're on to the final stem, which is a keyboard sample stem. And for this one, I've chosen to use the mastering version of the plugin. The two plugins sound the same, but the mastering version has some additional functionality and is based on the graphics of the 500 series, while the mix version is based on the graphics of the rack mount version. The main difference of the mastering version is that it has a mid-side mode, and you can do some really cool things with that. In mid-side mode, this channel here becomes the mid, and this channel here is the side. If you're not in mid-side mode, then you have the option to link the channels, in which case it's similar to how the mix version works, or you can unlink the channels, and then you have a dual mono processor with one channel here and one channel here. In mid-side mode, your additional controls for the side are here, and your additional controls for the mid are here. So let's check out this keyboard stem, and let's start bypassed first. Okay, cool. So I thought the synth stem had a little bit too much side information going on. It was a little too wide, a little too phasey. So I was able to use the plugin to kind of rebalance the mid to side relationship. So I brought up the gain here, and then I have the gain down a little bit on the side, and then I'm also able to process them differently. I'm using soft saturation on the mid channel. The colors dial down a little bit. And then on the side channel, I'm in turbo mode. I have the color dialed up a bit. It's a little zingier, but then I'm also using the mix control to kind of balance it out a bit so it's not too distorted on the sides. So let's check that out again. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to the last instance of the plugin. And this is going to be on the master bus. And of course, we're going to use the mastering version here. 
Another cool feature that the plugin has that the hardware doesn't have is the ability to independently turn off and on the sides and the mid. That coupled with being able to turn on the turbo mode in one go gives the software a leg up in functionality as well as being able to have multiple instances. So I have this on the mastering bus here and uh, let's check out what that sounds like. And we'll start with the plugin engaged first. Out. Back in. Okay, cool. So we're back to a subtler sound. We're on our mix bus, so I don't need to destroy my mix here, although I could if I wanted to. So what do we have going on here? On the mid channel, we're in soft saturation mode and the color is dialed down a little bit, a little bit warmer. Gain is relative to the input. Mix control is almost 100% wet, but not quite. On the side channel, I've engaged the FET shred mode. Drive is at three. Color is dialed up a little bit for a little more high frequency response. Gain is about four. And I have the mix dial back a little bit so that way my sides don't get too crazy. So with this mid side setting, I'm able to treat the sides a little bit differently. I'm able to get some nice soft saturation, some nice compression, some nice vibe on my total mix. I'm bringing up the overall RMS level so that even though the peaks are about the same, it feels louder and more present. Let's check it out again. Okay, so that is the character plugin. As I said before, I'm a big fan of the hardware and I'm really excited to finally have it as a plugin. I think it's a nice addition to the palette that I already have because it's based on a transformerless, discrete solid state design that uses FETs as gain control and distortion elements. So it really does have its own sonic signature. It's able to do very subtle sounds and very extreme sounds and everything in between. It has a lot of great functionality and a simple, easy to use interface. And even though that I have a lot of saturation plugins already, this one is really unique. Because of its discrete FET based topology, it really does offer a nice contrast to my other tube based saturation processors. It really does hold its own and I encourage you to give it a try. So I hope you've enjoyed my demo. If you're interested in checking out the character for yourself, go to pluginalliance.com and download a fully functional 14-day demo. Check it out and let us know what you think. Thanks.